do a brief session on working with text and fonts out of the artistic text tool in Corel Draw. We can do a number of different things with text and fonts, and I'll actually take a look at this here. I'm just going to enter some text, and we'll call this text Adjustments. And we'll change this to a Swiss font. And you notice that when I try to change this with the text tool, it doesn't change. If I want to change this and I don't have any text highlighted, I have to go to the pick tool and then I can change my font. Or if I go, I'll hit Control Z here, and if I go back to my artistic text tool here and I highlight, left click, hold down, drag across the text and highlight it, then go select Swiss, it'll change that way. But if I don't have any text highlighted when I'm dealing with artistic text, it won't change the text or the font unless I have it highlighted. Now I can change parts of this text. Let's say I want to make ADGJUS a different font. I can select just those fonts or just those letters and then come up and change those to Arial and then I could change the font that way with that. Now another thing we want to pay attention to when we're working with artistic text and what I want to do is I'm going to enter some artistic text in a couple of lines and I'm just going to call this Corel Draws Artistic Text and we'll work with just a couple of lines here. We'll put a period there at the end. Now, you'll notice that when I've got this text entered in, again, my properties bar has changed. I can make my text bold, I can italicize it, underline it, and I can also horizontal alignment, center, left, full justify, as you can see there. Now, everything in Corel has real-time um, updates, so you can go with a live preview while you're working with it. Now, once we've got this set up this way and we're working with the properties bar and I'm going to go ahead and put this right back up here and I'll go ahead and repair this bar and bring this over here back to the top and then we'll bring this back over and reorganize these bars just a bit here so our properties bars are back to normal. Another thing that we want to be aware of is beneath our pick tool is the shape tool and when we click on that we'll have some different ways that we can adjust our text even further with this shape tool, there's some arrows over here to the right hand side. If I left click, hold down, and pull those, you can see that I'm changing the spacing between my fonts right there. That'll change the spacing between my fonts. I can make it more space or less space. I can also come over to these arrows that are over here on the left, left click, hold down, drag those, and I can change the space between the lines even further I can go ahead and move individual text by selecting the nodes and moving those nodes if I wanted to mix up this text that I have we'll zoom in here and we'll take a look at this again the arrow over here to the right spacing between the text the arrow to the left spacing between the lines your kerning etc and also we can move by clicking individual nodes of letters so if I wanted to move this text around as you can see here I can take and change this space here and then move this up here and mix all this text up as you can see it there and I can also get in here with that selected and change the character angle if I enter a 10 here and hit enter you'll see that that E that I had selected I just rotated that also got vertical character offset and you can see we can actually slide and adjust that in our properties bar but it's much easier to do just selecting the nodes as you can see here. And we can also lasso and select several nodes and move several pieces of text or several fonts or several letters in our text at the same time. So we can make many adjustments working with our artistic text just by knowing that we can work with our shaping tool and how to work with our artistic text tool down here. Now a lot of these same properties apply when you're dealing with paragraph text. And I'll go ahead and create a simple paragraph box here and we'll go ahead and we'll say paragraph text here and all I did to create that box was just hold down my left mouse button and create a text effect in Corel Draw paragraph text in Corel Draw now this is different than artistic text and I've got a typo here but I see I got a red line under that so I can right click I can left click in that 
get my cursor flashing, right click and Corel will offer me alternate spelling, but that didn't work, so we're going to go to A-R-A, -A, and we're going to get rid of the I-C on the end, and Corel will probably correct this now. No alternate spelling, and we'll go ahead and get rid of this. Now it's spelled correct anyway, but most of the time Corel will have a spell correction for you there. If something's spelled incorrectly, you'll get a red line under it. You can put your cursor in there, right click, and you'll get a correct for that. Same thing here. Now we've got the same arrows, a little bit different, but they're still here. If I go to my shape tool, you'll see I get the same arrows inside the paragraph text. I can do the same thing, and I can also highlight my text and change the font if I want to. Even though I'm in paragraph text, go to my shape tool and left click here on this arrow, pull down. That'll change that. Left click on the arrow over here on the right hand bottom side and pull out and that'll change my spacing as you can see there. So these are just some of the fundamentals of working with artistic and paragraph text and making adjustments to that text in CorelDRAW.